ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهد الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله بعد اعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم لقد كان لكم في رسول الله اسوة حسنة لمن كان يرجو الله واليوم الاخرة وذكر الله كثيرا بعد اعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم لقد من الله على المؤمنين اذ بعث فيهم رسولا من انفسهم يتلو عليهم اياته ويزكيهم ويعلمهم الكتاب والحكمة بعد اعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم انا نحن نزلنا الذكر وانا له لحافظون بعد اعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم انك لعلى خلق عظيم میرا کمال عشق میں اتنا ہے اے جگر میرا کمال عشق میں اتنا ہے اے جگر وہ مجھ پہ چھا گئے میں زمانے پہ چھا گیا میرے قلب کو بھی نصیب ہوں تیری ذات سے وہی نسبتیں وہ جو عظمتیں تھی اویس کی وہ جو رابطے تھے بلال کے جو نبی کو میرے قبول ہوں وہی کاش میرے اصول ہوں وہی صبر ہو وہی گفتگو وہی آجزی وہی سادگی رب شرالی صدری و یسر لی امری وحل الاغدتم من لسانی یفقہ قولی My respected brothers and my sisters Today inshallah in a very brief khutbah As we all know, we are going through the blessed month of Rabi Ulawwal. And I would like to educate myself and my audience some of the very unique aspects of the life of beloved Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So we all can enlighten our life today the very first thing which i want to share with you allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in quran has promised inna nahnu nazzalna zikra wa inna lahu lahafizun that we have revealed we have sent down this quran and we will be the one who will preserve protect quran allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has protected quran in three different ways number one the literal meaning of this ayah the words of Quran are protected letter by letter there is no deviation there is no change in last 1400 years and there will be no change up until the last human being on this planet there are two other ways that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has protected his deen and one is the role model of riyasat Madina, state of Madina the practical example of Quran that's why it is said the best book of tafsir is the life of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and the best book of seerah of the Prophet is Quran so that is another way that how Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala has kept the role model of riyasat Madina, the Islamic state of Madina. And the third way Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has protected his message is the life of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu We all have to understand, role model for you and me can only be the person that he can guide you and me and our future generations from every aspect of our life, from every dimension of our life. There is only one human being on this planet including 124,000 more or less messengers of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and I can challenge and you can challenge there is only one personality in this whole universe that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has protected his personal life the way he has not protected any other life and that is the life of beloved prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that's why he is the only one who qualifies 
to become the role model for today's generation and future generations because his life can guide you and me in every aspect of life yes we can get inspired on certain specific areas by certain personalities but when you take the whole life as one package the only person who can guide us who can become the role model for you and me is the life of prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam and this is a miracle this is a miracle and this is a fulfillment of the promise of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala inna nahnu nazzalna dhikra wa inna lahu lahafizun that allah is going to protect quran the life of the prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam and the role model of the state of madina riyasat e madina if we want to get guidance from prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam there is a condition you know in quran when i read from surah ahzab allah subhanahu wa taala is providing us the conditions that if you really want to learn from the life of prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam and the conditions are laqad kana lakum fi rasulillah uswatun hasanatun liman kana yarju allah wal yawm al akhira wa zakara allah kaseera the condition is the only people who can really learn from the life of prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam who can get true inspiration from the life of prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam people who want to make prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam as their role model the condition is the first condition these are the people they are looking forward to meet allah subhanahu wa taala and yawm al akhira they they have believe in allah subhanahu wa taala and they are looking forward to meet allah subhanahu wa taala on the day of judgment this is one condition and the second condition is wa zakara allah kaseera and they do the zikr of allah subhanahu wa taala in abundance what is zikr zikr is that they remember allah subhanahu wa taala in every moment of their life whenever they come across any situation they always submit they always keep the word of allah subhanahu wa taala high they always stay as a obedient servant of allah subhanahu wa taala in every moment of their life this is a zikr of allah subhanahu wa taala because my brothers and my sisters the condition to learn from quran and to learn from the prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam we have to purify ourselves alif lam mim zalikal kitab la ra ba fi hudal lil muttaqin quran can provide guidance only to people who have taqwa of allah subhanahu wa taala they have cleaned themselves from inside their heart is ready to accept the message of allah subhanahu wa taala and as it is said in another surah allazina yaskuruna allah qiyamun wa qudun wa ala junubihim wa yatafakkaruna fi khalqi samawati wal ard rabbana ma khalaqta hadha batila subhanaka faqina azaban nar before they ponder on ayahs of allah subhanahu wa taala if they want to learn from the ayahs of quran and ayahs of the universe the condition is they have to do zikr of allah subhanahu wa taala allazina yaskuruna allah qiyamun wa qudun wa ala junubihim to they remember allah subhanahu wa taala they do zikr of allah subhanahu wa taala they surrender themselves they submit themselves i was thinking about one thing that what was unique about sahaba and tabeen and tab tabeen they did not have any tarbiya programs they did not have long durus of quran they did not have long khutba of friday they did not have you know long speeches in their life what was so unique about sahaba tabeen and tab tabeen one thing i came up with and listen to me my brothers and that thing was thumma lam yartadu that once they accepted islam they decided that they will not go back they they will have no doubt they will have no shak they will have blind faith on allah subhanahu wa taala and the messenger of allah subhanahu wa taala prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam they gave themselves 100% in the hands of allah subhanahu wa taala and prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam they never questioned 
whatever Allah asks from them, whatever Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam asks from them, they never questioned. They surrendered completely. This was the only difference I see between us and them. But this was the unique thing about Sahaba and Tabeen, Tabe Tabeen, my brothers and my sisters. This is something as a condition if we really want to learn from Quran, because because Quran is a book. If somebody wants to go and get deviated, get darkness, Quran will provide him deviation and darkness. But the one who needs light and a straight path, Quran will provide that path as well. There is another aspect of the life of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. When Quran says, "Bad auz billahi min al-shaytan rajim al yama akmal tu lakum dina kum wa atmam tu alaykum ni'mati." That we have completed this nema. Deen of Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala, wa radhi tu lagum al Islam wa Deena, and we have accepted this as a path to live this life for you. When Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala is saying that we have completed this Deen, completion of Deen cannot happen until you have completion of the role model of this book, the practical example of this book. That's why Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said that in one of the Sahih Hadith. That I have been sent to fulfill, to complete the ikhlaq to the excellent position, to complete the best of the ikhlaq. Because when Quran is a mirror and complete role model, the messenger should be a complete role model for humanity. And that's why Quran is a witness. Surah Al-Qalam. Wa inna kala ala khulukin azim. That you are at the highest status of ikhlaq. Morals, values, etiquettes, manners of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. So we are blessed that Allah subhanahu wa taala has given you and me this tawfiq that we are part of this ummah, and then the ummah in which the message of Allah subhanahu wa taala is complete in its final shape, and the role model life of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam is completely. Preserved and in front of us as a complete role model, my brothers and my sisters. The second thing which I really want to cover in today's khutbah, and that will be the lesson that we want to learn from the life of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. As I said, life of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam can guide us from all dimensions, but there is a key stone dimension of the life of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. The source from where all the goodness come out, the spring of water which provides nourishment to all aspects of life, and that key stone aspect of the life of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is his ikhlaq. What is the definition of ikhlaq? Ikhlaq is character. Ikhlaq is behavior. Ikhlaq is your morals and values. Ikhlaq, ikhlaq is how you conduct yourself when you live in society. Ikhlaq is that how you approach. Ikhlaq is your morality. Ikhlaq is your manners. Ikhlaq is really the practical example how you live your life in all dimensions: living at home, engaging your enemies in the battleground, how you behave in the shopping place. How you behave outside and inside, this is how all completed by the definition of ikhlaq. I want to share with you one very important point. As I said in the beginning of my khutbah, in the time of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, there were no long speeches, there were no long khutbas, and there were no everyday lectures. Rather, the model was. That Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam presented himself as a practical example, and he worked on Sahaba for 13 years in Makkah to do their tazkia, to clean them from inside. So every Sahabi was a role model for his society. So when I am living in a society without uttering a single word. My behavior, my conduct, my ikhlaq, the way I live my life—that is dawa. That is passive dawa. Islam has spread it through passive dawa. 
because there is a human psychology when you do talqeen when you give nasiha to somebody when you do too many durus of quran or too many speeches it really creates a hijab hindrance obstacle between the speaker and the audience and that is one of our problem we see in our ummah that we got so many speeches so many speakers so many durus and quran but we have very few people who really are living the life of quran who are living the life practical example of quran because as i may have shared with you one story of uh, abdullah bin mubarak rahmatullah alay you know when he, his next door neighbor was a jew and he was selling his house if i make it easy for you to understand the house was of 100000 dollar but the jew was asking 200000 dollar and somebody came to him and asked your house worth only 100000 how you are asking 200000 he said the value of house is 100000 but the value of living next to abdullah bin mubarak is another 100000 that was islam even enemies of prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam they were finding sakina peace under the tree the shade of this tree of the ikhlaq of prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam that everybody who will sit around the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam he will get the fragrance he will get mu'attar fragrance of the perfume of the life of ikhlaq of prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam that's why you see it's very amazing that throughout history you will not find any such example that whoever was closest to prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam has become more closer to him he has made him more you know ideal for himself and i will share with you few examples hazrat rabia bin kaab al aslami this was the sahabi who was the companion of prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam for night prayers he used to pray with prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam at night and this is the sahabi who used to bring water for prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam to make wudu ablution for tahajjud prayer when one night prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam asked rabia ask whatever you want to ask today is your night rabia ibn kaab as-salami did not ask did not even he passed for a second he immediately asked prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam ya rasulullah i want your company in jannah prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam asked him anything else he said no ya rasulullah i don't want anything else i just want your company in jannah my brothers and my sisters this can only be said if somebody who is close to you is really impressed with your life and this is how prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam was that whoever was close to him he saw one young man in masjid nabawi and he was little disturbed prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam asked him what is the problem i see some disturbance on your face he said ya rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam you know whenever i am in masjid nabawi i see you i get sakina coolness to my eyes when i go home and whenever i remember you i get worried concerned it disturbs me so i rush towards masjid nabawi and whenever i see your face i feel relaxed and i feel fine but the thing which is making me worried is when i will die and you will also be gone from dunya ya rasulullah if if i will qualify for jannah no i don't know where i will be but you will be in the company of prophets and shahada and salihin and siddiqin so i am worried that in this dunya when i am worried i come to masjid nabawi and i see you i feel relaxed but what will happen in jannah because you will be somewhere else and my status will be somewhere else prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam did not answer him rather quran jibril alaihi salam brought these ayahs of surah nisa in which allah subhanahu wa taala says ba'da a'udhu billahi minash shaitanir rajeem 
صدیقین And about that company, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is admiring. Allah is saying, Wa hasuna ulaika rafiqa. What a wonderful, what a honorable company is that. My brothers and my sisters, this was the glad tidings for every Muslim. Up until the last human being we are going to come in this planet, that if we will follow Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the messenger of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and we will love them, we will submit ourselves and we will stay on this path that we have chosen we will not have any doubt about our faith and our belief then this is a glad tiding for you and me that we will be in the company about which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying wa hasuna ulaika rafiqa what a wonderful what a honorable company is that may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant you and me this tawfiq that when we depart from this dunya that we have firm belief in our deen and we are looking forward to meet Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and to join him in the company about which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying what an honorable company you know about the ikhlaq of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam I will just give you two dimensions of his ikhlaq number one politeness softness and wallahi if we adopt that politeness and softness in our ikhlaq Many of our problems will get resolved in our home, at our businesses, you know, wherever we go. The major problem we face is because of our harshness. So this is one of the things that we should practice. The second thing which I want to share with you of his ikhlaq is understanding of emotions and feelings of other people. Respecting feeling and emotions of others. In modern terminology, I have explained this before, it's called emotional intelligence. And Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu had, you know, mirage of that. And one of the examples I will share and close. One day Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu went to Bazaar of Medina to buy a shirt. He had 10 dirham with him. And he spent 4 dirham, bought shirt. As he was going back towards his home, he saw one poor man worried, concerned and he asked him what is the problem? He said, Ya Rasulullah, what you have in your hand? He said, you know, I have bought shirt. He said, Ya Rasulullah, it looks good. Can I have it? Prophet gave it to him. But Prophet sees on his face that even he has received that shirt, still the concern and worry he has on his face has not gone. So Prophet did not just leave, handing over shirt to him and left. No, he rather waited and notice that the worry of his face has not disappeared. So he asked him, what is the problem? You got the shirt? He said, Ya Rasulullah, I am a ghulam. And my master, he sent me here to buy something. And I lost the money. Prophet said, how much was that? He said, two dirham. Prophet gave him two dirham. But look at Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Who else could be more busier than our beloved Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu and he not just did this, gave him two dinar, dirham and left. No, he still wanted to make sure that this companion of him is comfortable. He looked at his face and he sees that worry and concern is still there. And Prophet asked him again, what is the problem? He said, Ya Rasulullah, I am worried that I am too late. When I will go back, my master is going to punish me. Prophet holds his hand, goes to the house of that master, knocks his door one time, no answer, second time, Salaam Alaikum, no answer, third time, Salaam Alaikum, he comes out. And Prophet asked him, you know, I called three times and said Salaam three times, but nobody came out. He said, Ya Rasulullah, we already noticed from our window that you are coming towards our house and we are blessed. And when you said one time salam, we waited, so we want to hear salam again from you. And then we waited to hear 
this salam third time from you prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam that we wanted to collect all the blessings possible from you prophet says to them listen this is your slave he got late please be easy on him go easy on him they say ya rasulullah if you have come here for him we will not go only easy on them but today he is a free man he is not slave anymore my brothers and my sisters from this message the point i wanted to make is that understanding of the emotions and feelings of other people and especially the time and age we live in social media especially my youngsters my youth that when we are texting and on social media we are chit chatting we really violate the feelings and emotions of other people right and left we injure their hearts so two things which i have concluded from the life of prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam is politeness softness and second thing is the respect of feelings of other people may allah subhanahu wa taala grant us tawfiq that we can really learn from the role model of prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam so we can enlighten our life of this dunya and that will inshallah bring ultimate khair for us in the shape of janna